Hi folks, this is audio lecture 7-6. The topic is going to be hydrogenation, the addition of hydrogen to alkenes. This is a new reaction. We're going to be focusing only on the reaction, in other words, predicting what the products look like. And since this is a stereospecific reaction, we're going to be looking at the stereochemistry. So what we have here with hydrogenation is we're starting this transition to from, from addition reactions to alkyl halides and elimination reactions that produce alkenes to starting to look now at reactions of alkenes. And this is going to lead us into chapter 8. So in this particular reaction, we have an alkene and we have hydrogen gas. And it's always going to be present in excess because it's really hard to control the number of moles of a gas. And we're going to have some type of a transition metal catalyst. And what occurs here is really a very simple reaction. Wherever you see an sp2 carbon of the alkene, you're going to add one hydrogen atom to each carbon. In other words, your alkene gets converted to an alkane. You can see where the two hydrogens added, and of course that erased the hydrogen deficiency of two by adding those two hydrogens. It's also no uh, accident that I have both of these hydrogens shown in red as pointing in the same direction. This is a stereospecific reaction, and it is so because the hydrogens add by syn addition, meaning that they come into the double bond from the same direction. We'll be focusing on that on the next slide. So I've got a few additional reactions here that we can look at. Here we have an alkene an excess of hydrogen and our metal catalyst. This sp2 carbon has one hydrogen on it. This sp2 carbon has two hydrogens on it. We're going to add one more here and one more here. We're going to go from the alkene to the alkane. So we have an extra hydrogen here and an extra one here. Remember, all hydrogenation is is taking an alkene, converting it into an alkane. A neat thing we can do with hydrogenation is that instead of adding the isotope hydrogen, we can also add the, hydrogen, the isotope deuterium. So in this case, one deuterium atom gets added to this carbon. Another deuterium atom gets added to the other sp2 carbon. And we're going to get a product that looks something like this. Now, one interesting thing here you may note is that if you look at this carbon, you notice that it is now a chiral center. So by changing the, the, um, the hydrogen to deuterium, instead of there being two hydrogens here, hydrogen deuterium, we now generate a chiral center. And this reaction is not limited just to alkenes. It will also work with alkynes. So here we have a carbon-carbon triple bond. On this carbon, there are no hydrogens. On this carbon, there's one hydrogen. Remember that there are two pi bonds here. So instead of adding one mole of H2, we're going to add two moles. Now I'm not putting the stoichiometry here because this is present in an excess. So you're going to add a total of four atoms of hydrogen now, but the result is the same. We're going to go from an alkyne to an alkane. And here's the product here. These two hydrogens both were added to the triple bond, and two of the hydrogens on the methyl group were added in. Okay, let's take, let's take a look now at what is going on in terms of the stereochemistry of this reaction. Since this is a, a stereospecific reaction, it is a stereospecific reaction because the way the hydrogen gets added to the double bond. Remember we're using this metal catalyst. The hydrogen is actually absorbed onto the surface of the catalyst. So as the alkene approaches the two hydrogen atoms, they have no choice but to add in coming from the same direction. In other words, syn addition. So let's consider this alkene and let's consider what happens when we add hydrogen to the sp2 carbons, one hydrogen atom gets added to each carbon. That gives us this alkyl halide in this case, since we have a halogen present. Notice that as each hydrogen was added, we created two new chiral centers. 
so we can ask a bunch of questions now related to that. First off, what will be the maximum number of stereoisomers? You may remember that there is this little formula, uh, 2 to the n, where n is the number of chiral carbons. We have two chiral carbons here. So that means there is the maximum of four stereoisomers. But since we have syn addition of hydrogen to either face of the alkene, we are only getting two stereoisomers being formed. In other words, this is a stereospecific reaction because we're not getting all possible stereoisomers, just a select few. So how do we go about actually drawing the, the proper stereochemical configuration of these two new, uh, of these two stereoisomers? And that's actually pretty easy to do. So here's that alkene that we just looked at on the previous slide. So let's consider that the two hydrogen atoms can either be coming from outside of the screen or on top of the screen and coming in from the top, or they could be coming from behind the screen and coming in from underneath the planar alkene. So again, the two geometries we're looking at is the two hydrogen atoms coming from the top or coming from underneath. Let's consider what happens if they come from up, up top first. So here's our hydrogen molecule. These heavy lines represent the direction the hydrogen's coming from, so they're actually sticking up out of the screen as they're coming towards the double bond. As the bond forms between the sp2 carbons in these two hydrogens, they're going to end up coming up out of the screen, but it's going to push back this ethyl group and this chloro group. It's going to push them backwards. Again, the hydrogens are sticking up out of the, out of the screen. The ethyl and the chloro get pushed back into the screen. And that gives us this product. And this is the stereochemistry to expect. The two hydrogens are on the same side, both coming out of the screen. It pushed back the ethyl group. It pushed back the chloro group. Now, let's consider what happens if the two hydrogens are coming from back behind the screen. Okay, so we can consider this orientation. The hydrogens are, are, are coming from back and underneath. They're going to be both bonded going backwards. And that means the ethyl group gets pushed forward and the chloro gets pushed forward, giving us a product that looks like this. Two hydrogens came from the back by syn addition, pushed the ethyl and the chloro forward. So, how are these two related to each other? If you look at the configurations, well, you may want to pause the recording and actually determine what the configurations are. If you do so, on the left, you find that the carbons have the S and the S configuration. Now, for the molecule on the right, all you have to consider is, well, the hydrogens are both coming from the opposite direction, meaning that you should get the opposite configuration. In other words, the R and the R. These are the only two stereoisomeric products that are possible here. This is syn addition, and it is a stereospecific reaction. So this is, a, as I said, a nice transition as we're going from reactions that created alkenes, such as E1 reactions, or substituted for a leaving group, such as SN2 and SN1. Now we're going to start talking about reactions that add something to a carbon-carbon double bond. Also, this, this particular recording is the last one for Chapter 7, and this is the last bit of information you're responsible for for exam number 3. And that is the end of this recording.